Hi, I'm Jonathan O'Toole, and I'm not a pastor, I'm not a theologian, uh, I'm not a priest, but I am familiar with the Bible, and somewhat familiar with hermeneutics, and I just shared a video that I saw from some uh, Protestant uh, news commentators, I think it's called uh, True News, they're pretty good, and they were talking about the mark of the beast, and two of the points they were making, these guys are coming from uh, the perspective of... Uh, uh, they do not believe in what uh, in the pre-tribulation rapture. So they, they were warning against people who think that uh, people are going to be raptured away before there's a mark of the beast or an antichrist um, takes power enough power to to force people to take the mark of the beast. I think they were correct in warning against that uh, pre-tribulation rapture theology. But I want to step back and talk about the mark of the beast because I think one of the uh, mistakes they made, even though their their message was good, don't take a chip, don't take an implant, don't take a tattoo, no matter what form it comes in, don't don't let you know this world system mark your body. But I think they're they're missing the big the bigger picture. Having said that, having absolutely do not allow people to put a chip in you or nanotech inside you. And one of the things they said was that uh, you know you can't repent after you've taken the mark of the beast. And I want to clarify that. That's part of the reason I'm making this video. First of all, one of the primary rules of hermeneutics, that's the study, the science of biblical interpretation. And the first rule is to uh, think about and bring to bear on the text primarily, first and foremost, before you go off on any tangents, on any modern applications, you need to know and get in focus exactly what the original context was. So, for example, when the uh, uh, New Testament, uh, when the apostles are reinterpreting uh, biblical Old Testament prophets to apply them to Jesus, they also had to have in focus what the original, many times there are multi-layers of interpretation. So Isaiah may prophesy, or Jeremiah may prophesy, a messianic prophecy that might have an immediate historical application, okay? It's not it's not either or in every case. Sometimes it's both and. In other words, sometimes a prophetic, a scriptural prophecy has a, an immediate historic application in the immediate historical context and also, sometimes, also a future application. It's not always uh, either or. I, sometimes it is specifically either or. Sometimes it's uh, one or the other, and sometimes it's both and, okay? And I think that um, very clearly uh, a study of the immediate historical context of John the Revelator shows that there is, that, that the mark of the beast is a both and. In other words, to wrap it up, when Caesar was going around under either Vespasian or Nero or any of those persecutions, and when they were um, requiring Christians to burn incense to Caesar. They would take the right hand, okay? They would take the hand, and I don't know if this video is reversing my my right hand, but this is my right hand. And they would they would take the censer, and they would light the incense once a year. By the way, you had freedom of religion in the Roman Empire. You could worship any god you want to. Uh, you just once a year had to acknowledge that Caesar was Lord of Lords and God of Gods. Well, if you bowed the head to that image, and if you took your right hand, which symbolizes the power of a man throughout Scripture, most men are right-handed, uh, the right hand is the dominant hand, the right hand of God's power, a man's right hand is usually stronger and more agile than his left, so it symbolizes your power. You're supposed to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, right? Well, this uh, symbolism in John's revelation in the apocalypse symbolizes uh, him taking us taking our power and yielding it instead of to God to this world system us worshiping our head our forehead symbolizes us bowing and assenting to this world system or to world governments when they contradict the will of God but the apostles said we have to obey God rather than men so I'm contending okay listen very carefully that they took those Christians who burned the incense to Caesar, apostatized, lost their faith, 
and took the mark on their right hand, even though it wasn't a literal mark. Don't get too caught up with technology here, okay? They took a mark, a symbolic mark, that damned their souls by burning the incense to Caesar, by bowing their head to his image, and by obeying man rather than God, in a direct defiance of the tradition that the apostles um, gave us by dying, being crucified, in Andrew and Peter's case, being, being dying rather than um, disobeying God. Okay, That is the mark of the beast in its immediate historic context. Now, if they come up with nanotechnology, First of all, let me back up, let me back up. People, you can repent. These people were saying you can't repent. You can repent. You can always repent. Never despair of repenting. Don't take the goddamn mark, okay? Because a lot of people, most people don't repent. But do repent. People did repent. They were called the lapsi. There was a big controversy as to whether or not they should be allowed back into the church. And the church finally agreed. They did, the people who repented were allowed back into the church. It was a terrible thing, though. Imagine your brother and sister, some of these people had turned in uh, family members of other people, and people were saying, what, you turned in my sister, you turned in my uh, brother, you turned in my dad, you turned in my son, and they died, and now you went back in the church? At a certain point, the blood of Christ does forgive, but it's a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing, and most people don't repent sincerely, and God knows your heart. So this idea you can't repent of the mark of the beast, okay, now in a modern incarnation, is it possible that they could come up with some kind of a nanotechnology or some kind of a, a mind-controlled technology where the, where the very taking of the mark itself actually uh, took away your will to repent? Well, I wouldn't rule it out, but just to clarify, you can receive the mark without there being any mark on your hand. You can receive the mark. Definitely don't take a literal mark, whether it's a tattoo or a chip or nanotechnology or whatever. But you can get the mark simply by obeying man rather than God and not repenting. Okay? That's the mark. It's when you, whatever you yield your mind to rather than God, whatever you worship as your first priority with your, with your strength, the strength of your right arm as a man or a woman, Higher than God, that's the mark. Don't kid yourself. Yeah, don't take a chip. Don't take nanotech. Uh, if, they, if they tie you down and force it on you, God knows your heart. Do repent if you take something like that. Do repent. Don't bet on repenting. You never know when your life is going to be required of you. But bear in mind the immediate historical context. You don't have to have a freaking tattoo on your hand or nanotech or a chip to have the mark. They had the mark simply by burning incense to Caesar. And consider this. The government has legalized baby murder. Now let this sink in. God commands us in his word, rescue the perishing. We're not rescuing those children. We failed. Shame on us. We're obeying men rather than God. Is this the mark of the beast? Think about it. You better be sure.